Chucky's on 1067 The Fan. Joining us right now in studio. Guy won a Super Bowl with the Indianapolis Colts. Now he's back home coaching Anacostia High School. It's Cato June. What's up, Cato? What's going on, man? Cato. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Cato was a baller back in the day. <laughs> did you go to a Pro Bowl? Yes, yes, sir, I did. Got, got, I got the opportunity. Was it 2000, what, five? Oh, 2005, yeah? yep. That must have been nice. Yeah, it was It was good until uh, you get over there and all the 12-year veterans uh, make you pay for everything. So Oh, they do? <laughs> yeah. Is it that way? <laughs> kind of break you. Hey, they come over here. We're, you know, the first we're, time. Yeah, first timer. And then you look at your bill when you leave. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I saw uh, Ray Lewis do that to Sean Marion. I said, ooh, I don't want to pay that bill. <laughs> <laughs> so like dinner bills and bar bills, that type of stuff. You Absolutely. Just, the young guys got to float to that, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I made sure to, I told them the wrong room. Yeah, I'm in uh, 2201. Right. Yeah, I wasn't even in that building. <laughs> All right, give people an idea. They for still pe- find you. For people that don't know your story, you went to Anacostia, but where did you come from before you, you got to D.C.? Well, let's see. I, I have a funny story. I was born in uh, Riverside, California, and I moved to Oklahoma, um, came from Oklahoma to D.C. when my mother moved here, mm-hmm. and, you know, found my way to the southeast side of town. So you were raised in Oklahoma, and then you came here when you were in high school. Yep, sure did. What brought you here? My mother. My mother Mom's was already job. here. My mother, my other younger brother here, and then I ended up moving, you know, back with my mother. I got you. Uh, man, and, um, you know, people always say, man, how did you end up at Anacostia? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a funny story because I did uh, um, Upper Bound over there at, at Howard Upper Bound, and, and the coach, Coach Stu's son, was one of the counselors, and, you know, that was the connection. Hey, coach, I got this kid over here, and I didn't know. I just I said, hey, I got opportunity to play football. I'm ready to play, and, you know. And just ended up in Southeast D.C. What was the difference between playing in Oklahoma that I guess that <laughs> one year and then playing in D.C. in high school football? Well, you got to understand, I played 6A. It was 6A football out there, you know, similar to your Texas, right. you know, big time, you know, 10,000 people at a game type of situation, playing every Friday night to plan on. You know, at this time, we didn't play at night because we didn't. no one had lights. So right. we played a 3 o'clock game. A lot different. A- a- absolutely. The atmosphere absolutely. is a lot different. Um, you were you playing Michigan, and did you play with Tom Brady? Yeah, yeah, I played two years with Brady. Um, what was it like? Because he wasn't the clear cut number one quarterback there. right? He wasn't. It was tough for him because you know he, you know, the Henson that he was fighting yeah. with. Yeah. Henson, but I mean, you got to think. But before that, you had Dreisbach and you had Greasy. Right. They never really got his shot, and then when it's it's his turn to get his shot, you know, he has to deal with the whole number one class, Drew Henson, the next best thing type of situation, and he ended up fending them off for you know for a couple of years. But I always saw Brady as uh, the type of guy was a leader, and and you know he was always almost like the comeback kid. You know he'd always bring us back um, in in a tight situation. So uh, he never really got his due, I think, in college. Yeah. But uh, I think he made up for it. <laughs> was he deflating the balls at Michigan too? <laughs> hey man, you know. <laughs> what is your take on that? Give us give us your take on that. What the, the kind of gamesmanship that goes on? Have you heard of this kind of thing? Everybody's trying to get an edge. Right. Uh, just you know you know we always say in sports if you're not cheating you're not trying but. I personally don't know what uh, a deflated football is going to do. Maybe it'll help you um, throw the ball a little further, but you know, we'll help him grip it. Is, is I guess the uh, I can see that in a yeah. in a you know rainy situation and and the rain's coming down, the weather and all that. But I, I'm not sure. All right, you know, it just looks bad. You know, it just right. looks bad. You know, especially coming out, you got the spy gate. Oh, the Patriots cheating. They're always doing this and that. But you know, it's just not a good look. I'm not no. sure that how much in an advantage. Is going to give you versus the other team, but you know it, it doesn't stop you from tackling uh, the ball carrier. It doesn't right. stop you from covering a guy. Yeah, also. were the things that you did or your teams did? There's things that you saw that were a little outside the rules that that, that happened. Did Peyton ever do that? <laughs> no, nah, not that I know of. I mean, I, what about I, guys used to use stick them? Right, that's been outlawed uh, for I mean, years. Yeah, I mean, you're going to use like like even the gloves now. Like if you if you get a uh, you, you, you know a pair of gloves, they they're they're very tacky. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you know, you see guys making ridiculous catches. And I'm not saying it's because of the gloves. I'm saying that, hey, it is an advantage. So, yeah. you know, you're going to use whatever advantage that's within the rules um, to, to you know, until they tell you, you know, you can't. You Almost like, like the Mark McGuire. Like, we had the, the Android, whatever, you know, Anderson that he was using. And then all of a sudden it's banned because they realize, oh, this is an advantage. You're going to take that advantage until somebody says it's against You guys are spraying like uh, cooking vegetable oil on your jersey so people can't <laughs> yeah. get a hold of you, all that stuff. That, that's illegal. It's funny because my guy, uh, Ty Howard, uh, at college, uh, Ron Johnson from Minnesota, had. he said, man, he told the refs, hey, something, he had something on his jersey. So 
Apparently, the rest went over there. He had like some type of crease on his jersey. They made him change his jersey. Oh, right. really? <laughs> How many times did you pick off Tom Brady in your career? You had one game where you picked him off twice. Those only two? Did I get him three times? I don't know. I know I at least got him twice. Nope. Do, you, do you remember those things? Like when you're laying in bed sometimes or you're watching a game or you're just daydreaming? Do you ever think back to those times or no? Uh, you do, absolutely, especially when the game comes on. But I, I think more so it's, it's nostalgic when you when you see a picture. You're like, man, I remember that play. Right. Or, you know, or you see a replay from an old clip. You know, it's, it's always can you, fun. To, can, you, can you picture it in your mind, like almost in slow motion as it <laughs> happened? You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's it's, it's slow now because you, you you sure can't move like you used to. At least, at least I can't. Now, right. you're the head coach at Anacostia. <clears throat> when a player challenges you, if they ever challenge, do challenge me in, in what manner though? Like, uh, verbally. Verbally. Like maybe they okay. don't follow your instructions. You say, "Look, I want a Super Bowl. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about." You, you know what? It, it, it's a it's a challenge just because you're dealing with teenagers and people that you know the kids that at that age. They, you know they think they know everything. Mm-hmm. And me having a Super Bowl, being an All Pro, and playing big time college ball doesn't mean anything to me having to prove to them, hey. You know, this is what I want you to do, and it doesn't matter if you think it's the right way or not. You know, uh, trying to convey that message is, is to a teenager. You know, the whole <laughs> they do <laughs> accolades know, really don't. You know, really don't come into Joined play. Joined in studio by Cato June, former NFL Pro Bowl linebacker, won a Super Bowl with the Indianapolis Colts. Now head coach at Anacostia. By the way, What's sixth round, sixth round pick. Br- yeah. Brady was a six round pick too. Yeah, but I mean that's 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 <laughs> impressive. Six round pick. A little more money than you, Cato. A little guessing. bit, just a little bit. <laughs> but I'm saying, I'll give you props. Six round pick to a Pro Bowl. That's impressive. You know, you know, it, it's just one of those things where it, you can't really, you know, predict what when when that's going to happen or how you know all those things. You know, it's all about a popularity and how much for how much your forty time and you know what you did in college. But at the end of the day, and probably you get lucky too that you joined a great organization. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, all those things matter. You know, you talk about uh, the success like a uh, Russell Wilson had or like you joined Tony Dungy's squad. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what I mean, like uh, you played on three or four teams. Was that the best organization you played on? Um, you know, we did a great job in Indy. Um, that organization is great. Bill Polian did a great job of bringing the right people in. Um, and and Dungy is one of those coaches that, hey, who's who better to play for? So when you signed with Tampa, you were a free agent, right? Yeah. So you you leave Indy, you sign with Tampa. That was that must have been a nice payday. It, it was, you know, because you come off the Pro Bowl, you you know, obviously winning the Super Bowl, and and to sign with Tampa was a three or four year deal. Uh huh. Yeah. You still uh, got any money left? I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, but you know, it would have been nice to stay in Indy to try to you know get a couple more. Uh, you know, a couple more Super Bowl runs there, but you know, you have to do what's best for you in that situation. Um, if you look at it, I wasn't the only linebacker that they let go. It was Mike Peterson, Marcus Washington, David Thornton, all before me. You know, so I figured, you know, hey, once I have my four year run, then I'm out the door too. Yeah, was that a situation where it was just kind of the highest bidder? Were there other teams that you were looking at that just the money wasn't the same? Uh, it, well, it's the highest bidder per se, but the best situation as well. You right, want right. to put yourself. You know, career wise, and you know, in a situation where you can have success, yeah, kind of hurt us when uh, um, Allen got fired and Gruden they put <laughs> they took Gruden out of there, so that was a tough situation for a lot of our veteran guys. I hope your agent called the Redskins at least got them <laughs> to drive the price up for your contract. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. Were you ever talking to the Skins before you signed with Tampa? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, the, the Skins were never. They were, you know, a different style of defense that that, that I played, but you know, it was. So is this what you want to do, staying at Anacostia? Is this what you want to do, or you want to move on to the next level coaching? What do you want to get into? Well, you know, you always want to challenge yourself and, and put yourself in positions where, hey, you know, what's the next challenge? What's, you know, what can I try to conquer? That sort of thing. So I'm not saying I wouldn't just stay at Anacostia forever. I'm not saying that I want to leave. I, I know that, you know, if opportunity presents itself that, uh, you know, that's intriguing, I, I might take it. Now you have a foundation as well, right? Absolutely. Can you tell us about that? You know, um, you know when I f- – when I first got in the league, you know, you always want to give back per se to um, maybe some less fortunate uh, kids or kids that you, you know, kind of grew up with. And, and that was my thing. Wanted to show them, hey, that not only can you make it and, and you know, be something from this side of town that, hey, let's, let's look at it from a different vantage point. And, and our focus really is to show the kids the business side of sports because no one really looks at it. You don't look at the, you know, the TV side, the production side, you know, 
the radio. You always think, hey, I want to be a football player. Or I want to be a basketball. I want to be an athlete. But they don't understand that the whole business, the whole business side of that, that you can, you know, be a part of and right, take still, your passion into a different area. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's that's kind of the focus. And, I, and it's funny because I kind of get to do that every day. You know, as I walk through halls and and I'm, you know, I'm also an athletic director, so I get to you know try to put people in places to see things from a different light and empower them. Like, hey. You know, I got a guy, you're you're, the, you're my video guy. You know, there's a whole team of people right. that this is what they do for a living. They p- get paid good money, and they get to travel with the team, you know, by – you think, oh, Coach, oh, you just want me to tape the game. No, this can be something you can go to school for and, yeah. and really get good at it. So I'm, I get to kind of implement, you know, my philosophy on a daily basis. Nice. Good yeah, stuff. my kid loves football, and he plays on a flag football team. He's seven, but he's probably going to lean towards that side, <laughs> of the video <laughs> guy. Playing side of it. Right, right. I mean, he caught a nice screen pass in one of the games, but that's be, about it. let's be real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's got my jeans. Yeah, he's probably not going to Michigan on a full <laughs> probably ride. Probably not. Like, All right, well, Cato, man, really appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. It's Cato June. Can you give us a, the uh, website or whatever your foundation? Oh, yeah, junefamilyfoundation.org, junefamilyfoundation.org. JuneFamilyFoundation.org. Check Perfect. it out. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kato. Appreciate it, buddy. Good luck with everything, buddy. Right Appreciate here it. on the Junkies.